Hey, how's it going? This video is going to be a brief overview of Pankstep's affective neuroscience as a lead in for understanding depression. So, modern psychiatry has tried to make the leap directly from brain molecules like serotonin and dopamine directly to the behavioral facts of mental illness. So, for example, saying depression is low serotonin or saying that schizophrenia is aberrant dopamine. We know that these explanations are simplified and in some ways incorrect but there aren't really any other widely accepted disciplines that explain these mental illnesses. Modern psychiatry also hasn't really embraced evolutionary explanations for these mental illnesses. So evolutionary psychology suggests that our actions are driven by survival and reproductive advantages. So evolutionary theory states that behaviors are shaped to maximize reproductive success, and they favor traits that enhance the likelihood of passing on one's genes. But modern human behavior is really complex and often goes directly against evolutionary advantage. Two examples that I can think of that might seem a little silly but I think illustrate the point are the use of condoms and the enjoyment of oral sex. So these two behaviors directly go against our evolutionary advantage and demonstrates that we engage in behaviors that take energy and forethought but directly decrease our reproductive success and shows that humans engage in behavior that are pursued for pleasure and for intimacy and for strengthening romantic bonds. So humans have drives that encompass emotional and psychological and social dimensions and go beyond simple reproductive logic. I bring all this up because there's clearly something operating in between neurochemicals and human behavior. And we know that that something has to be evolutionarily driven, but doesn't operate on the basic evolutionary principles of reproductive success. And that something is a field called affective neuroscience, which is a field that's only been partially embraced by modern psychiatry. So the person who coined the term affective neuroscience was Jock Pangsep. And he was a neuroscientist and a psychobiologist who studied the neural mechanisms of emotion. So affective neuroscience makes two key assumptions about emotions to tackle important questions about complex behaviors. The first assumption is that emotions evolved to do something specific in relation to biologically significant and life-challenging situations. The second assumption is that felt aspects of emotions, here we're referring to affect, affect with an A, they serve a central purpose. And that purpose is to motivate the organism to promote its survival and reproductive success. So Pankcept used electrical stimulation of different brain areas, pharmacological challenges, and looked at brain lesions of mammals. And what he found is that mammals and humans only have seven primary emotional systems. So the seven biologically inherited primary affective systems are seeking, fear, rage, lust, care, panic slash grief, and play. And looking at behavior through these seven biologically inherited primary affective systems can help integrate a ton of seemingly disparate psychobiological findings and can help us to understand specific derangements of psychopathology and helps us to better understand depression and addiction and a whole host of different psychopathology. So let's just go into a little bit more detail of each of the primary affective systems. So primal emotions and their accompanying affects have the capacity to move animals to actions in ways that promoted their survival. And each emotion has a distinct brain anatomy, neuropharmacology, and physiology. And Pankcep capitalized each of these primary affective systems as a way to distinguish the primary emotional brain systems from their use in common language. So the first is the seeking system, and others have referred to it as the reward center. This gives the feeling of enthusiasm, not pleasure. And the purpose of the system is to generate emotions that prodded animals to explore for resources. The second system is the rage system, and the feeling here is being pissed off. And the purpose of the system is to compete for and defend for resources. The third system is the fear system, and the feeling is anxiety. And the purpose of the system is to escape from and avoid bodily danger. The fourth system is the lust system, and the feeling here is horniness. The purpose of this system is to identify potential mates and reproduce. These four systems are more archaic in the sense that they are fundamental for basic survival and reproductive success. And we see these systems are highly conserved across a broad range of species, including non-social animals. The next three systems are more socially oriented systems and are more developed in social mammals, reflecting their role in fostering social bonds, nurturing, and social learning. The first of these more socially oriented systems is care. 
and the feelings associated with this system are tenderness and loving feelings. And they developed as a way to nurture offspring. The next system is the panic slash grief system. And this system relates to social attachment and separation distress. The feelings that this system generates are loneliness and sadness. So mammals developed a powerful separation distress system for maintaining social contact and social bonding. And I'll be going into more detail on this system because of how it directly relates to depression. The last system is the play system. So this system encourages social interaction and the development of social skills, especially in younger animals. The feeling that this system generates is joyous. So this system helps stimulate animals to engage in physical activities like wrestling, running, and chasing. So this system helps animals to bond and also to learn social limits and carries over into adulthood as joking around. So these seven systems are really the core emotions of humans and they're deeply embedded in our brain and are responsible for generating basic emotional responses. And imbalances in these ancient primary emotional systems are strongly linked to psychiatric disorders. Make it better, do it faster, makes us stronger more than ever. Our 